Hello people, in this video let us look at this important topic postmenopausal bleeding. It is important for exam. So guys, basically uh, if a person has attained menopause and one year after that, okay, she bleeds, then it is called as postmenopausal bleeding. Okay, so this is the definition. And uh, what you should understand here, there's one more point what the textbook says that if there is even after 50 year, 55 years, there is menstruation. Okay, then you can still consider it as menopausal, postmenopausal bleed. Did you understand guys? She has a menopause, she stops bleeding. One year later, she, she still has bleeding is postmenopausal bleed or after 55 years also, she has menstruation. So, it is postmenopausal bleed. Okay, so from where should this bleeding be guys? It should be from the vagina. It should not be from rectum or there should be no hematuria. I should uh, rule, out, uh, rule that out. So, basically, it should be bleeding per vagina. So, what will you say it is? It is bleeding per vagina and all the other rest of the part of the definition you will tell. So, why is this topic important guys? Because most commonly the cause will be a CA cervix that is carcinoma of the cervix. Okay, in India and uh, most of the world it will be mostly CA cervix. But in US etc. it could be because of this atrophic endometrium. So, uh, because the cause is cancerous, it is very important to focus on this topic okay so one third of the cases will have malignancy that's what you should understand you should not underestimate this case okay so what and all you should know here carcinoma of the cervix mainly you have to focus on that otherwise it is atrophic endometrium in the west okay otherwise other causes you should know are endometrial hyperplasia okay polyps could have uh, can be there there could be a retained foreign body extra or these women because they are menopausal because of those symptoms they could be horm they, they could be taking hormone replacement therapy right guys focus so they could be having estrogen intake so in history you should ask whether they are taking his, uh, any uh, estrogen extra that could be polyp we already told you or it could be an unknown case guys because um, it can happen that um, uh, with the use of hysteroscopes etc there could be bleeding okay how is it going people? So, let us continue. Uh, there is one box here which the textbook says uh, common causes of postmenopausal bleeding, gen uh, genital malignancy. Remember malignancy? That is what we are trying to tell you. That is why this topic is very important. So, how will you investigate? First of all, you should establish that it is bleeding per vagina and not from anywhere else. Take proper history from this person. Ask about the age of menopause. What is the pattern of bleeding amount? Episodes of bleeding? Is that you feel? Do you feel anything coming out of your introitus? Introitus is it? And is there any urinary problem? Is she taking estrogen? Right. Take the family history of carcinoma. Okay. Then let's move on to the general examination, guys. Are you able to focus? General examination. You will uh, uh, check for enlarged groin. Is it supraclavicular lymph nodes? Clavicular. Okay, then um, what else guys? Breast should be palpated. Okay, so let us look at this. You look at the supraclavicular lymph nodes, <clears throat> metastatic lymph nodes of the anterior vaginal wall. So again, some um, metastatic nodules you look for. Breasts you should examine to rule out anything that is like breast cancer, etc. Coming to per abdomen, what will you look for? Pyometra, a lump in the lower abdomen may be due to pyometra or uterine sarcoma or adnexal mass. What is this pyometra, guys? Focus. Looks like an infection, right? Of what? Of the uterus. Okay, guys. So, you are going to uh, look for any lump, etc. Inspection of the perineum. Now, you will check the perineum, guys. Um, you look for this ulcer. Decubitus ulcer, that's why they said, right, that uh, one of the causes, if we, if we saw the list, there was this decubitus ulcer. Okay, so they are just checking the vulva, etc. Then coming to palpation, guys, inspection over. Now you will palpate, you will palpate, uh, se separate the labia and then you will uh, look for the urethral meatus. You will just check if there is any caruncle, prolip or mucosal prolapse. Okay, you will just check, basically you are checking uh, external examination only this is. Then speculum examination, what will you do here? You will basically, you are trying to uh, look for what? CA cervix, right? So you will check the cervix for? Uh, any growth if the, you will take a biopsy then you will do examination of the cervix you will try to take a smear and exclude dysplasia or cin what is cin in uh, carcinoma cervix cervical intraepithelial neoplasia okay cervical intraepithelial neoplasia you have studied all this in pathology remember all this uh, look at this squamous cell carcinoma cervix are you able to see all this do you remember drawing all this in your pathology 
So basically here you are seeing the endocervical gland. This is the endocervix, squamous, squamocolumnar junction, ectocervix is shown here. Tumor cells in nest, keratin pearls. So they are showing you keratin pearls here. You can see this part is the keratin pearl. So this is squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. So this is how they have shown uh, the gross specimen of CA cervix which you have seen in pathology if you remember guys. So basically that is why they are saying postmenopausal bleeding is very important because of all this carcinoma cervix. If you remember this uh, table from your pathology textbook, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, squamous intraepithelial lesion, CIN, SIL. Okay. So this is the Bethesda system. So here you can see low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, high grade squamous uh, intraepithelial lesion. So it's caused by the human papilloma virus, the types they are telling. Right. And uh, do you remember the CIN 1 and 2 and 3? Yes, you remember the CIN 1, CIN 2, CIN 3. The dysplasia is mild in CIN1, is it, in this uh, low grade. And then it can be severe, carcinoma in C2 in the high grade. So basically what are they saying? In the low grade, you will see this coilocytic atypia flat condyloma. And in high grade uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion, you will see progressive cellular atypia loss of maturation. Very, very uh, technical terms here for you. Anyways guys focus, uh, let's uh, go back to the textbook and read now. So guys we were here in speculum examination for the cervix they talked about biopsy smear etc. For the endometrium they are talking about aspiration cytology and pipple endometrial sampling. These two for uh, endometrium they are talking about, these two for cervical uh, carcinoma they are talking about. Okay. So bimanual examination also they are doing. So the uh, they are checking if the uterus is having any pyometra or sarcoma etc. If it is enlarged, adnexal mass uh, uh, it means around it some mass is there if, if it's palpable they are checking isn't it then they are talking about special investigations guys uh, ultrasound you can do transvaginally okay because if it it's more accurate focus guys uh, what are we looking at investigations for what uh, postmenopausal bleed okay because mainly here they are trying to rule out carcinoma you get that right okay so what else they are telling here Wait. See, we told you one of the main causes is endometrial atrophy, right? Especially in the West. So basically, endometrial thickness less than 5 millimeter indicates atrophy. So you should be focused on that. Then they are saying saline infusion sonography is more accurate. Then you have hysteroscopy. But you remember, more hysteroscopy itself can cause bleeding, right? Then endometrial biopsy is done uh, using a Charman curette. Okay. Let's see what the Charman curette is. Kind of looks nice, right? Endometrial curette. Charman curate. Okay. Okay, then uh, some other curatage they are talking about endometrial biopsy, laparoscopy for any suspected ovarian or adnexal mass. <clears throat> so if it's something around. Focus guys, see basically we were focusing on the cervix, right? And the uterus. So now they are going around it also. Now ovaries they are telling and adnexal any around uh, mass is there. That also they are trying to check with laparoscopy looks like. CT, MRI, etc. You can write for standard everything you will write. This isn't it. Detection of a benign lesion should not prevent uh, you from doing further investigations. You should, should, should rule out malignancy. So now let us look at the treatment guys. Basically you will treat the cause, isn't it? Um, if you don't find the cause, then what will you do? You just observe because of the bleeding is minimal. Otherwise what will you do? If there is recurrence or continued bleeding, it's better to prefer laparotomy, to perform hysterectomy, right? Salpingo oophorectomy, they are removing the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, it? Salpingo oophorectomy. So basically, they have talked about hysterectomy here, isn't it? And what they are saying is, guys, uh, once you remove this uh, uterus, right, in the removed uterus, you may land up finding the actual cause, which could be a pathology, which was there in the ovary or the fallopian tube, or there could be have been a uterine polyp, which could be benign or malignant. All these things may become evident after you remove the uterus, okay? So, uh, basically, we will treat the cause, and if you cannot find the cause, you will try to manage with, uh, if there's minimal bleeding, but if it's more bleeding, then you will try to do hysterectomy, salpingo, oophorectomy, etc., okay? And then you will again do uh, check the specimen for the cause. Okay. So remember, guys, CA cervix and endometrial atrophy and how you will manage. Okay. Postmenopausal bleeding. Bye bye.